People learn best a lot of times by looking at pictures and diagrams. It helps us really understand what's going on. So uh, scientists, when they're trying to figure out who's related to who and how best to explain it, they often turn to diagrams called phylogenetic trees. Now, you look at that name and you think, wow, that's kind of a scary idea, but it's actually not a hard thing to understand because phylogenetic trees are essentially the same thing as a family tree. What's the family tree tell you? Well, a family tree shows you who's related to who. And that's what the purpose of a phylogenetic tree is for. It's a branching diagram that shows evolutionary relationships, which organisms gave rise and are most closely related to which other organisms. And like I said here, it's very similar to a family tree. Now, how do you construct a family tree? Well, you might start looking at uh, records that give uh, evidence of who gave birth to who, but a lot of times you may not have those written documents. So we can turn to DNA testing and see whose DNA is found in who. That's how they've constructed some of the, evolu uh, some of the family relationships of royal families and like Thomas Jefferson's family or his descendants have been tracked that way. Well, similarly, scientists will study the DNA of various different species and then compare their DNA, compare their RNA, compare their proteins, all these uh, different molecules to kind of figure out which organisms, which species are most closely related to who. Now, when you look at these diagrams, sometimes they're uh, kind of constructed very, um, I want to say diagrammatically, but other times they'll show different lengths of branches. And if you're seeing these uh, very specifically um, laid out lengths of branches, then they're trying to give you a sense of roughly how much time is uh, between those organisms, as in how long ago did they branch off from each other. If we take a look at this, this is an example of a phylogenetic tree. And you can see down here at the bottom, just like in a real tree, there's a central trunk. Well, this is implying that there's some kind of common ancestor. And from that common ancestor, we had these three major branches. And from those, they branched out again to give rise to all sorts of different organisms. And you can see way down here at the bottom, there's the common ancestor. You're up here in the animal kingdom. And you can see that there's been major, major groups, uh, or sorry, major, major periods of time that have separated us from all these other creatures. And so that's a phylogenetic tree.